Hi, this is Sheer Rubinoff with Insights in Tech. I'm here with Tim Draper. Tim, please introduce yourself to our audience. Tell us a little bit about your background and some things you're involved in today. So I'm a venture capitalist. I've been doing it for 34 years. Um, it's been a wonderful and extremely rewarding uh, career. I've, I've uh, been able to back uh, companies from the very beginning and and uh, 35 of them now have become unicorns, and we've had uh, we've had such success with that that I've become this great supporter of entrepreneurship and driving entrepreneurship. And we've um, we've built Draper University of Heroes for entrepreneurs, built out the Draper startup houses around the world, and uh, and built out the Draper network, uh, the venture network of 24 relationships with uh, venture funds in 48 different cities around the world. And uh, and now uh, I got very excited uh, when Bitcoin came along because this decentralization is just the next step in uh, global evolution. And I hope it comes to us quickly but I know that a lot of governments right now are resisting this change. Um, we have a, uh, a major opportunity now to become a decentralized, open, transparent, global planet. And, uh, and Bitcoin was the start of that. And I think this decentralization is going to be a big deal going forward. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that's me. Terrific. Well, thank you. Uh, you know what? To that point, let's just jump off from there. As we see the global spread of the coronavirus played a major role in the stock market crash this year. And you were quoted in saying that now may be a great time for innovation, such as Bitcoin and smart contracts. Being of this type of time that we're going through, can you expand on that a little bit for our audience? Yeah, there are a couple of ways I'm looking at it. Um, one is that I think this is government overreach. I mean, there it's, yes, of course, it's a, a terrible virus, terrible flu, but, um, but forcing us all to be in place is um, ruining our chance for herd uh, immunity and, uh, and not allowing us to go through our natural course of, of evolution. But I do know it's a lot of suffering, a lot of difficulty because of it. Um, and so I actually don't agree with the approach that uh, the governments around the world are taking. Uh, I think it actually will uh, be a real detriment to our economy. But the real benefit of something like this is that we start from a whole new platform, and uh, it, you know it's it's going to be a reset because our economy, um, you know, is going to basically tank. And then once that happens, people start looking for things that are new alternatives, new ways for us to do things. And that's where they uh, they start to, uh, they finally start to discover things like Bitcoin and VR and, um, and new ways of, um, of building out smart contracts. It, this is sort of a, a time that we can all um, take a breath and go and figure out exactly what the world's gonna look like over the next two or three decades, and we can plan accordingly, and we can build accordingly. Um, so I think that this could end up having some silver lining. It's a uh, it's a, a great opportunity for a lot of interesting entrepreneurs to um, adjust their thinking uh, and um, jump on this new opportunity to. Uh, new humanity that is looking for direction. They're looking for new ways of operating, whether it's new ways of uh, protecting themselves from viruses or it's new ways of um, uh, building out a contract or uh, using the blockchain to uh, keep perfect records or uh, new ways of uh, doing drug design that, that uses uh, uh, biocomputation. All of these new technologies that we've been working on, we've been 
funding companies in these regions, this area, these areas, for the last five or ten years, now um, are going to be they're going to be brought to light as great new opportunities. This is um, this is a great time to be an entrepreneur. It's a great time to be a venture capitalist. Sure, absolutely. Uh, the valuations are going to come down, but the opportunities and the willingness of the consumer to try new things, I think, are going to be uh, enhanced. Well, very interesting points. But to that to that point of the way you're talking about, one of the questions on everyone's mind, and certainly in the startups, has been venture investments. Will venture companies look to invest now in even some of these great, wonderful startups that are great with innovation, digital transformation, um, smart contracts, as they're looking to conserve cash. And a uh, second part of the question, will startups have that funding themselves or even to run stealth long enough to get that investment to actually make an impact uh, in the world where they need to, to the next level of how we're going to operate? Well, it's no, there's no question that this uh, government lockdown is shutting down thousands, maybe millions of small businesses around the world. And, uh, and it is going to take a huge toll on entrepreneurs everywhere. A great entrepreneur, though, will look at this and say, this is an interesting opportunity. Uh, this is an opportunity to, uh, to evolve, to try something new, and to test the water with customers to see if they will accept something that's a little bit further out, a little bit more science fiction um, I think that uh, it is an interesting, it's going to be an interesting time. As a venture capitalist, I'm going to be looking very carefully at companies for the next year or so before funding them. Um, and I believe that, you know, the Series A valuations uh, are going to support Series B and C companies over the next couple of years. Um, and the, the seed valuations will support a Series A-like company today. Uh, and companies are going to have to think, how do I survive for three years? That's what a, a good entrepreneur is going to have to do. And what's going to have to happen is that the customers, the consumers, are going to have to make up the money that used to be coming from venture capitalists. And so the, the true customer comes to, to the fore. And... Uh, the true entrepreneur is looking to figure out how to take their technology and apply it to that marketplace that will grow fast enough so that they can um, they can survive for the three years before the uh, financial markets pick up again. I, I'm, I'm saying three years. You know, it was interesting. 2008 was like a speed bump for venture capital. Yeah. But 2001 was the beginning of like four or five four-year drought, exactly. a very difficult time to raise money during that time. But some great companies came from that. Sure. So I think the experienced venture capitalists will be able to navigate that a little bit better, I think, than the first time. Sure. And let's talk blockchain for a moment. I speak quite a bit around cybersecurity and obviously how blockchain will affect cybersecurity and cybersecurity blockchain, you know, in a sense on how they'll meld together. As we are in this type of world that is definitely changing quite a bit. Do you feel that blockchain will play an even more important role in cybersecurity going forward? Well, you can answer that in a slightly different way than I think you're, you're posing it. <laughs> because um, Bitcoin's never been hacked and the banks are getting hacked all the time. And you need cybersecurity to protect the banks. What's really going to happen is that people, the banks, people are going to look at the banks and say, wait, you take two and a half to four percent from the merchant every time I swipe my credit card. You are at the mercy of these governments that are a little bit whimsical. I mean, all of a sudden we got two trillion dollars that is now taken in and put into the government. And the government's supposed to be putting that out, but it'll be years before it goes out. The governments are huge friction items. Uh, so it's going to be a long time before that goes out. Well, if you're using dollars, you're saying, wait a second, 
this dollar is going to drop by 10, 20 percent in value relative to what it was when this thing started. And the dollar will drop, not just all the stocks and all that. The dollar will drop. And Bitcoin, you know there are only 21 million of them. You know it's a trusted system. You know it's secure. And you don't, don't need to think about it in terms of cybersecurity. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's got true security in that it's got 100,000 computers watching everything it does. I, I think we're in a, a, one of those amazing um, times where uh, the, the old system worked for us for a long, long time and everything was great. And then it got a little bit fat and happy. The, the banks and the governments with their cushy relationships and their, you know, control over everyone through their currency is now starting to disappear. Now we've got Bitcoin. We've got these other cryptocurrencies. They have the ability to go across border. They have, they're much better, more frictionless. They don't cost you two and a half to 4%. Um, and if, uh, a government does something uh, uh, willy-nilly that sends us down the um, sends our currency down uh, in a, into a downward spiral. We have something that can hold up the value that we wanted in the first place with our currency. So I actually think that um, this will be one of those times where where uh, the the openness to new ideas and new hopes and new technologies uh, is coming through society because, look, it didn't work. The government wasn't, you know, we're sitting there always saying, oh, the government's going to take care of us. It's us. I mean, all of the innovation has happened through the private sector. Even this COVID vi the, the virus, all the tests, they're all coming from the private sector. All of the inoculations. They're coming through, through the private sector. Uh, and all of the uh, cures, they're all coming through the private sector. The government didn't protect us from anything here. Mm -hmm. So people are going to start realizing that it is the private sector. And the private sector permeates the entire world. And that, that entire world has so much innovation in it, so many great things that can happen uh, because all of these really interesting um, opportunities, all these interesting uh, entrepreneurs are doing so many interesting things. Uh, this is really an exciting time, uh, but it's a, it's a scary time for people who are glued to their television sets. Yeah. It's an exciting time for the people who are looking and going, there is an interesting crisis here that is going to open up people's minds. Well, very interesting, and, certainly. And but... that, that opening creates amazing consumer opportunities. Certainly. And what would you say to people who are looking to start to get into this space? Obviously, it's not usually an ideal time to go into something as we look at the way that the stock market is somewhat crashing right now. But as you said, there is room for innovation and opportunity. So what type of pointers would you give to maybe people looking around saying, you know what, I really buy into this and I would like to get involved. What can I do? Well, the first thing to do is embrace the new technologies, yeah. embrace them, look around for how you can use these new technologies in your job, in your business, in your life. See how you can take advantage of it. We're using it right now. We're using Zoom. Correct. Um, it, uh, look at how you can um, bring VR into your education or your children's education. Look how you can um, incorporate smart contracts into the way you work contracts with your customers and suppliers. Look at how you can um, potentially pay your employees with Bitcoin or, or uh, keep uh, the perfect record on it uh, with a blockchain. Uh, think of how you're going to keep your data, how you're going to use your data, how you're going to employ the knowledge you build from that data. Um, think about how you're going to build a flattened marketplace that is more open and global and transparent. Um, think about how you're going to work with people from other parts of the world and how your customers are not just based in your own country, but could be based
least in any country. Um, think about how you can um, you can bring humans to a new level of you know, um, evolution, um, where we are no longer tribal and we are a peaceful one world, one open world. Um, think about how you can improve government services and how they are, those governments are going to have to compete with other governments for your, uh, for your uh, customership, for your ability to be their customer. Um, start thinking about what's next. I mean, we've already seen the greatest government overreach in the history of the world. And part of that is a reaction to the fact that we recognize that we're global and the governments are all saying, no, 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 we're tribal. We have to be, we have to be tied to this geographic area. We have to have these people as our enemy or these people as our threat. It's all, that's, that makes no sense. What makes sense is we have evolved. Throughout business, we have evolved. We know how to operate in, in countries all over the world. All those countries are doing business with each other. And all of the companies within all those countries are doing business with each other across an enormous web of, uh, of just a giant network of the economic strength. Yeah. And uh, by isolating us, we are really hurting ourselves, uh, not just the herd uh, immunity system, but um, we're hurting ourselves. We're keeping ourselves from having cross-border business. And boy, that cross-border business has been a huge boon to the world economy over the last 10 or 15 years. Certainly. I think we've got to, um, this, is, this is one of those times we got to overcome all the stuff that's been that's being pushed in the press, pushed by the government employees, pushed by the leaders, the, the uh, politicians, uh, and we've got to start thinking for ourselves: what is the best route? Where where do we go? How do we best get there? Certainly. Well, Tim, thank you very much for your really valuable insight, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you very Terrific. much. Thanks for having me on the show. Thank you.